Howdy, I'm Chuck with Simply Nook, and this is the Phantom Canyon Teardown. So I have another video where I show you all of the outside and inside. And so we're going to tear this one down for those who are interested in how the cooling is set up and also how the blowers, how to access the blowers. Now what I have removed is the top plate and the RAM and SSD. You can see that I'm wearing an anti-static smock as well as a wrist strap. It's really important to follow anti-static precautions uh, because you can easily damage your board. And doing so, then you'll have a dead system. So, to get started, these the two antenna are coax connectors. It's a ring with a pin or socket in the center and you have to come down and unplug these two straight up and I've already done that. So these are, and if you go look up what a MHF4 connector is, put in MHF4 space coax, C-O-A-X, and you can see how these are constructed. If you remove these wrong, you will tear the socket off of the radio which is soldered down and you will have a, a broken Wi-Fi in your system. And it'll be pretty obvious to Intel if you try to send it back on a warranty that you physically damaged it yourself. So please know what you're doing before you do this or just use this video to uh, as an instructional video of how it would happen if you wanted to do it. But I've pulled these two out. There are two clips that hold the coax in place. So I'm going to pull them out of that. And then the coax cables, I'm going to move uh, out of my way for the moment. Actually, the next step we're going to do is to take out the four screws, one on each corner. You can kind of see them down in these recesses, the shiny screw. These are the four screws I'm going to take out. This is a number zero Phillips head screw. So we'll take these four screws out. Now the Allen head wrench that comes with the unit to take the top off will be the same Allen head wrench we'll take the next four screws off. On the front of the unit, two of the vent holes actually have Allen head wrench screws in them. You should be able to see those right there. So I'm going to take the Allen head wrench that came with the unit and I'm going to remove this screw. They're really short. Uh, remove this screw. All right. And then on the back, the same thing. There are two. These are easier to see because they're not in vent holes. So. Take these two out. Now please note that if you are just trying to clean your blowers, clean the dust out of your system, it's sufficient to simply take compressed air, com can of compressed air, and just spray through these vents. This will clean out the cooling fins, the fin array, which is in there, we'll see in a minute. And then on the bottom, you can see the blowers and they're, they've got lots of, of open uh, ventilation. Just simply take your can and blow all the dust out of here and you can actually shoot it down into the blades of the blowers till the blower's spinning because then the air will be hitting each of those blades and cleaning any dust out of them. So that's all you need to do to clean the blowers. Clean the two blowers and clean the fin array with compressed air. However dusty your environment is will determine how often you need to do this. Anytime you get visible dust and certainly a lot of dust out or you notice that your temps are increasing, you need to go blow that dust out. All right, so we've taken eight screws out. There are two blower fan connectors on each side of the back and there are reach down as close to the connector as you can, pinch the wire and pull the connector off. Now you might need a screwdriver to unhook it, if it uh, to get to it, but try not to pull on the wire 
uh, as much as you're pulling off of the connector. You don't want to pull to the side, you want to pull it straight up. So there's my two blower wires and the antennas. And, I, and again, I actually didn't need to remove them at this time because the next step is to remove the quad micro microphone array. This is actually holding our uh, chassis in place. So there is a little clip. You can see the clip here. So I'm going to take a flat bladed screwdriver and I'm going to pull, and you can use your fingernail. In fact, I can use my fingernail. Pull that clip aside. See if I can get to it where you can see it. And then the, the, the quad microphone array comes out and you just sl slowly work it out. It unhooks on the other end. And then we got our wire assembly. Reach down as close to the header as you can, pinch the wires all together and pull on it. So you're pulling even pressure on each of the wires. If you try to pull it down and one of the wires is shorter than any of the rest, all of the pressure will be on that one wire and it could actually tear the wire off the connector or pull the pin out. But there is our quad uh, array microphone. Next, we're going to, to take the plastic wrap housing off and we're just going to take, pick front or back. I'm going to pick back. I'll turn this toward y'all. And I'm just going to bow it away from the metal and unhook it. And then I'm going to go to the side. And there's little clips you can kind of see right here. That's a plastic clip slid over the top of the metal. And this is a plastic clip. So as I pull the side up, it comes straight up. And I pull the front and the back up evenly. I will just work my way around until this comes off. I didn't actually need to remove the radio antennas or the blowers for this to come off. I only needed to remove the quad mic array and the eight screws. But since I've done that, I've now got the blower wires out of my way and the coax cables out of my way. I can lift the board straight out. So we're just gonna do that next. There's nothing else that holds the board in. Now one other note is this is a prototype unit and the production units uh, for Hades were different than the prototype unit that I shot the video on. So a lot of people didn't notice that they had more trouble with the production unit because they changed the metal. Another note is that the fin arrays go straight down so we don't want to tilt the board out. We need to bring the board straight up. And I'm actually going to turn it over and see if it wants to come out. It's the front that's hanging up. So I'm preventing the back from coming out while I figure out what's holding the front end. Ah, there is a standoff right here. Uh, it's already loosened on mine, so I'm just going to take it out. And that's what was holding the board. So there is one screw that holds the board in, and that is this long standoff. So you may need a nut driver or need, um, some needle nose to get this off. The motherboard comes straight out. We'll take a look at the blower array first. So there's our two blowers. There is a unique left and right blower. Um, so if you have a bad blower and you want to order a replacement, you do need to know whether you need left or right. Here's our Wi-Fi antennas. They're on this little uh, flexible PCB. Uh, it actually has uh, copper traces for the antenna. You can kind of see them a little bit better on the back side. And these are our antennas. And you can see that the antenna over here, the coax cable runs across and then is taped to the top of this blower. So if you're taking this blower out, not only you have to take the three, three screws off, but you'll need to take this tape off and you'll want to take it off such that you can stick it back to the new blower. And you can also see that you get no more access to the blowers from the top than you do from the bottom. You actually get slightly more from the bottom. So you might as well just clean it out through the bottom. All right, here's our motherboard. There's the top side that you've already seen. Here is our fin array. And 
And then here is our Intel Core i7 processor with XE graphics and our RT NVIDIA RTX 2060. You can see that there's multiple heat pipes plus an extra one down here. There's also numbers on each of these screws. The numbers are the tightening order. Now typically I remove screws in the same order that they dictate tightening. So if you look closely, you can actually see next to each of these are numbers and I'm gonna use that to, to take that off. The other thing to note is there's nothing of value for you to take this apart. If you take it apart, you're gonna mess up the thermal paste and perhaps even the thermal gap pads that are underneath here. And if you don't have spares and then you put it back together, you, you may actually not have enough cooling to operate anymore. So again, if you are just curious, look at this video. If you wanna re re replace the thermal paste, um, then this video will show you how to take it apart. So I'm gonna go in the reverse order. So this is eight, seven, six, five. Now these are on spring steel and, and the way they work is when you tighten them down all the way, you don't have to torque them down, but when you tighten them down, the spring is going to apply the correct amount of pressure to the, the uh, copper plate that's uh, over the die to sink that heat off. And then there's two more screws here. And these could be uh, snugged down really tight. All right, so that's all the screws. Eight screws get uh, on their, their spring plates are just uh, loosened up, they're retained, and two screws come out here. The next thing is the thermal paste may not want to give. Uh, you've got kind of a gluing action or surface tension action of the heat sink on the die. So you need to break that surface tension by putting your fingernail under the corner. I would not use a screwdriver because you'll tear up parts. Just put a, your fingernail, if you have it, under the corner and apply upward pressure until it gives. And there it is, it, it released. This one's a little tougher. Um, so I'm applying, there's two screws that held this plate in and I'm gonna use my fingernails on both of these to remove them simultaneously. And they really don't want to give that thermal gap pad that's under there is really adhered to the parts and it does not want to give up. So I'm going to go up to the corner and just give it some tension and let it slowly work its way off. And there we go. So just taking a quick look at the cooling solution first, you can see that each of the inductors and FETs as well as the processor and memory components are all um, cooled by these thermal gap pads and these are tacky they're 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 like glued on they don't want to they're they've got silicon in them and they don't want to release and then you can see here my thermal paste because I've removed it now I have gaps in my thermal paste and I'm gonna have to fix the thermal paste before I put it back together you can also see that one heat pipe is shared between the CPU and the GPU here hitting the fin array the CPU gets its own cooling area out here um, because the blower is blowing across it first so it would blow its heat out and then the uh, RTX 2060 has two heat pipes that get about seven eighths of the entire length that doesn't get this last bit because they come up and kind of hit it and they come here so that's all the cooling for the RTX and then the power supply components for the RTX has a separate heat pipe up here getting its own cooling. All right, we'll take a look at the board and you'll see what I'm, uh, there's also, and this one kind of moved over, there's a stack of thermal gap pads here for additional cooling for some part. The kind of the cool thing of having uh, this, this heat assembly with lots of metal surface area, if there's any component that you need cooling, all you have to do is put a thermal gap pad to, to compress between that part and the plate and it'll sink the heat. This is actually thermically conductive. It'll sink the heat up into this metal, which takes it over to the fin array to be cooled. 
All right. And you can see ah, that our DRAM, I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the plate. It didn't come off with the plate. It stayed behind on the components. There. So we have our Intel Core i7 processor, and we have our RTX 2060. And you can see we have six memory uh, chips for the RTX, and we're missing two. Now the reason for this is, originally Intel was going to offer three different processors. I think it was going to be like an i5, i7, and i9, and they were going to offer two graphics chips. I think the other one was the 1060. And as such, these RAMs could have been for the 1060. It may have had a different memory wiring. You can also see all these power supply components. So the power supply components are made up of a FET, which is a, like a switch, an inductor, which is a coil of wire, and capacitors. And these get hot and they carry lots of amperage. So 19 volts comes into this and there's a, over a dozen power supplies that convert that 19 volts down to other voltages, such as five volts for your USB ports, 3.3 volts, 1.2 volts for the DRAM, 0.6 volts for the DRAM. The processor uses something like 0.65 to 1.05 volts at 100 amps. And so this power supply here has to carry 100 amps. And then this one is probably carrying something like 0.65 volts at 150 amps for the RTX 2060. And then you have the memory power supply for the memory chips. And you have a power supply here that's probably a secondary power supply for the RTX. And you have another power supply and another power supply. And, and these power supplies are probably for the memory DIMMs. And so this collection of capacitors, FAT, and inductor typically signifies a power supply. And you can see there's lots of power supplies. And these power supplies need to be cooled. And so on here, there's actually, if I look at how this is done, there is, let me see if I can put them on together. So you can see that these inductors and these fats are directly cooled. This little stack here is hitting that part down there. Uh, we have a uh, cooler for the DRAM that are missing, the, the graphics memory that's missing, and we have thermal gap pads for the memory that's there. We have, uh, these are going to hit these FETs that are for this power supply, which is probably the memory power supply. This one's hitting another part, interestingly enough. Let's see where that ends up. I mean, I find this fascinating how they work out what they need cooled. And the advantage of this methodology is you can just put a thermal gap pad anytime you need to sink heat off to something. And then they have this power supply right there is hit. And then they have the processor power supply. This is probably a secondary processor power supply. The processor typically has two or three voltages on it. So this is the main voltage. Uh, probably at something like a max of a hundred and uh, maybe 125 amps. This is probably this is probably designed for 150 amps, and this is probably designed for 200 amps. And then we have our secondary power supply uh, for the processor, and that's it. So that's what the bottom of the board looks like. If you want to tear it all apart, I really recommend that you get all your thrills watching this video. And you don't do this yourself, you know, don't try this at home. I'm now going to have to go and replace this thermal paste before I can put it back together. And then I always have the possibility that the unit won't come up anymore. Uh, fortunately, I have an anti-static smock and an anti-static strap, so I'm uh, protecting the board as much as I can. For more information or to pick up your own Phantom Canyon, head over to simplynook.com at the links below. And thank you.